Right, uh, my absolute pleasure this morning to introduce to you our, our vision meeting for, for 2024 uh, and the, the financial report for last year. Um, and there's no better song that we could have sung than, than gratitude because I am eternally grateful for what God is doing in this place. Uh, eternally grateful for, for the massive things that is done with, within the church finances as well. So I'm going to give you a brief financial report. Like I say, it re refers to, to last year and to the year before. Um, so please bear with us on that, but I'll hopefully I'll try and stir you up a little bit as to what God is doing um, into the future as well. So as you can see at the bottom of the slide, uh, we've got the, uh, the fine fit and function. Can't say that. Find, fit and function, but also the journey continues and we're going into the future now. So, so I'm going to show you this year um, in picture and in numbers uh, as to where we've been and to where we are going to be going. So in 2023, last year, we stood up in our annual meeting and we were, said we were making progress. And it's true, we were making progress, but we're not there yet. Uh, this is now the money bit, as I'm sure you understand. Any AGM, you have to have a bit of a financial report to, to satisfy the Charities Commission uh, and to satisfy um, everybody so everybody knows what we're doing with the money. So our latest audited accounts are for the year December 22, so we're looking back quite a way, um, but we're also sharing the provisional figures that are from December 2023. All of our church accounts are audited properly and, and submitted to the Charity Commission in, in accordance with their rules. And it's important to note that we are completely compliant with what the Charities Commission and what all the legal niceties are. So we're going to share with you in the next few minutes details of how much has been donated into the church uh, and some of the projects that we've supported. You will, I hope, have noticed some of the improvements around the building um, and they continue to go on. I don't know whether you noticed, but the, at the side over there, um, the, the path up to, to the back, so we've got a, a very good fire escape now if ever we should need to use it. Hopefully we won't, but if we should, then we can get that way on onto Daniel's... Yeah, <laughs> so we can skate down that, that rail, yeah. But uh, yeah, so it's, it's a, a, an, another improvement that we've put in place, and there will be other things that are to come as well. So we have a vision. We want to make the building more usable and attractive to people from within our church community and also anybody else that we should welcome in and we get every week we get somebody different coming into the building and they frequently say wow what a uh, what a building that brings honor to god what a blessing this building should be to our community so and we need to to rejoice in that that people just are wowed by the building um, so we need to look after and improve the asset that we have uh, and ensure that we have a building that is a joy for everyone to come into so this is our opportunity as church leaders to thank you for all the support that you have given over the last 12 months because the future is exciting uh, and we're now believing for a year of growth in the church, both numerically and spiritually in 2024. So make sure I press the right buttons. So this is just a little bit of um, a snapshot really as to where some of the money has gone in 2022. So um, some of the projects that we've supported. So. You can see on there some of the regular ones. So we've got Mark Ritchie on there. We've got uh, uh, Live Spring Church in Ollerton, who we continue to support as our daughter church um, because they have a massive debt burden around their neck, uh, and we want to see that relieved as soon as possible. Um, there's also the Garner Clinic um, that we've continued to support in, in 2022 um, and various other things. So I'll just leave that up for a couple of seconds just for you to inwardly digest. There's, there's projects... Uh, both locally, uh, nationally and internationally that we're involved in. You can see on there Richard and Fiona uh, from over at Derby, who we support on a monthly basis. Um, and there's also the, the, the support that went out to Canada. So, right, I'm trying to do multitask here and I'm not doing either of them very well. <laughs> <laughs> So, AOG uh, church plant project, we, as a church, we have a vision that we want to plant churches. So, and the AOG has a, a vision that it wants to plant churches. So we thought, what better way than to see our dreams come through than to start to sow into the dreams of our, of our parent organization. So as a, as, a, as a trustee group, we decided that we were gonna plant 1,000 pounds into the, the AOG church plant project. 
Um, so that, that's just a, a seed offering, really. We want to see church plants out from this building as well. So there's also um, several other things, so brain tumour support, um, and these are local charities that are having a massive effect on, on uh, people's lives. So a bit of details about the income. So from our latest audited figures, so again, this is from um, over a year ago. So our weekly offerings uh, total was 7,514. And you have to bear in mind that we were just coming... Oh, I've done it. I've do I don't know what I've done, but I've done it. Oh, is that right? Yeah. yeah. Right. You have to bear in mind, we were just coming out of COVID at this time, so the money that was going in through the basket wasn't a great deal. But the standing orders is, is right up there. So the standing order, majority of the income that came into the church came in by standing order, um, both in 2021 and in 2022. Uh, tax refunds, some fantastic amounts that we get back from the taxman. We do a tax return um, every two, every six months, uh, so we get money back from the taxman, which supplements what we give into the church uh, from those people who give by gift aid. So in 2021, it was 26,000 plus, and that was because we had a really fantastic donation at the end of 2021, um, and then we got the the tax back virtually straight away. And then in 2022, again, 18,000 is not to be sneezed at, is it? Um, the, the money that continued to come in from turnaround, because uh, uh, when these figures were in place, uh, we still had the turnaround shop, so we, we received donations in from turnaround every, every month as well. So across the, across the, the board, the total income in 2022, £121,922,000, which for a church of our size, numerically, is, is an amazing amount still. So these are, again, these are just a few pictures as to, to where we've given money to. A lot of people will have heard of the beacon. Um, as a church, <laughs> as a church, we continue to support the beacon on a monthly basis. Um, so across the year, um, in 2023, we gave £1,200, which was £100 per month. And, and they're supporting the homeless people in, in, in the town of Mansfield uh, and some of the slightly outlying areas. So amazing uh, work that's being done and we continue to look to support that as well so um, most of you will know what world of worth is it's when andy i um, can't remember his surname now andy david comes um, and they talk about the mission projects that they have um, not just in africa but in europe as well they support a lot of work that goes off in bulgaria um, so as a, again as a church you you guys you support World of Worth £100 a month. Um, so again, across the, the whole year of 2023 and in 2022, uh, we donated uh, £1,200 plus. So another one that you'd probably be interested in, Richard and Fiona. Um, they, they're, they're having a few difficulties at the moment. They've recently lost their, their biggest uh, supporter financially. Um, but as a church, we, we are supporting them £150 per month. Um, but they, they need your prayers. They really do need your prayers. They've, they've lost a supporter who was donating over £800 per month. So, and that is a massive chunk out of their income. So we need to, to keep those guys in our prayers because it's a, it's a project that isn't just about the furniture. It's about the prayers that go in and the, the support that they give to the guys in their locality. So please keep them um, right up there. So... Uh, 2023, Nikki and Samuel uh, in India, um, the support that we gave out to them was £7,520, which when you multiply it up into rupees, I'll, it must be into the millions. <laughs> uh, but the work that they do um, is, is, is amazing within the, the, uh, the children's homes and the, the schools that they support but also out into their wider community. They don't just stay quite locally, they reach out uh, they have a virtual, um, uh, they have a project where they'll take the motorbikes out and they'll go into some of the more remote villages uh, around them uh, and bring the God's word to them. So, so this is some of the other support that we uh, provided in 2023. Not greatly dissimilar to 2022, um, but it's always good to see where it goes. Uh, so, as I'm sure you can remember, there was various 
natural disasters that happened last year. Uh, there was the Turkey earthquake, uh, which we supported. Um, we had uh, an offering for especially for that, and then we gave some money out from church funds. There was also the disasters in Morocco and Libya, which were around about the same time. Um, and again, we gave some further funds there. Right, you're going to have to bear with me. I need a drink. Link to Hope on there is the, the shoebox appeal. Uh, which will continue again this year. So if you're not already putting uh, your stuff away in the loft, like Lynette, then you need to be putting it away now, ready to fill your shoe boxes. Um, but there's, there's um, things on there that you may not know about. Um, when Daniel went out to Nepal as a church, we, uh, we sewed into the, the church that's out there. Uh, and we, we bought, was it a drum kit? Was it a drum kit or was it just a drum kit uh, for the church that's out there? Because they, they were lacking in, in musical instruments and, and it's good to praise the Lord, isn't it? We've, we've experienced it this morning. So we want other churches to be able to have that. And if you haven't got the funds, then you can't do it. But we, we have the funds and we, we've been able to enable that. Uh, another uh, thing that you probably, some of the older guys here, older, more mature people, uh, Jill will know who Les and Pilar Norman are. And as, a, as, a, as a couple, we've supported Les and Pilar Norman uh, since the days of the old Blidworth and Rainworth Christian Fellowship. They're a, a couple that um, were originally going to Talbot Street in Nottingham. Um, but they have a vision uh, to see every tribe and tongue touched by the word of God. And, and they have a website which is called DCI and it goes out and they have training materials on there that churches in the remotest parts of the world have access to. So, th And it's good, solid teaching. It's not something that's going to be here today and gone tomorrow. It's proper, uh, godly-led teaching. So that, that's a couple that we've always supported. Um, and they are so appreciative. We get a, a card from them every year saying how much they appreciate the support that we continue to give as a church. So again, across the, the year of 2023, as a church, from that, if you remember back to what the income was, 123,000, I think it was, out of that 123, 33 and a half has gone back out in support for other ministries. So we're talking 25% of what the income into the church is, is going out in missions. So I think you can say we're a missional-led church. We are... We have a desire to bless our communities. We have a desire to bless uh, those further afield as well. So, so total income in 2023, 126,000. So it went up a little bit in 2023 from the 123 and a half that it was in 2022. So we, as a church, we believe in, in working in partnership and working with those around us. So um, we've got Jilly here today from Blidworth on the Move. Um, so as a church, we work in partnership with Blidworth on the Move for the benefit of all of our communities. People can see on the side of the van that we are a church that is wanting to bless our communities because it says the church name and, and church logo on the back of that van. And it's important that people see that. So I'll, I'll share a few things with you that, uh, that has been happening. So over the past year, we've welcomed... Me. We've welcomed people into church, uh, so there are people who have worked with us in our local community, bringing benefit to individuals and groups, irrespective of who they are, and, and nor should it matter who they are. So we've worked principally in partnership with uh, other local churches. We work in the local churches together. Um, um, we had the meal at, at Easter last year, and we're going to do it again this year. Um, we work with other charities. We work with community groups and also with our local councils to access funds and services to provide support for the vulnerable and isolated in our locality. So Food Aid Blidworth was set up at the start of COVID uh, and we've recently accessed funds uh, from Newark and Shore District Council um, and they're gonna uh, enable the ongoing viability of the Blidworth on the Move Food Aid um, to, to keep going for at least the next six months just on the funding that they've provided, which is, phenomenal really because it wasn't a grant that we had to apply for they just said oh you're one of five charities we want to support this year so there we go they're just throwing money at us and that's a local council um so and, and it's no small sum either we're, we're talking over three thousand pounds 
which is, which is phenomenal for, for somebody just to walk into the church and say, you can show a district council wants to give you £3,000. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> so I've given them the bank details and it should be in there within the next few weeks, which is brilliant. So God is good. So our Christmas hamper project as well was supported by many individuals from within church. People uh, gave, gave us cash, they gave us food. And also people in our villages uh, were so generous in sharing food and gifts. I know uh, many uh, donations of food went in through the, the fire station up the road. Uh, and people were coming in and, and bringing stuff in. And again, they were looking around and going, never knew this building was here. Uh, what an amazing blessing it can be. So we need to keep on remembering that, that we can bless our communities. And in addition, local businesses got behind the project to ensure that its success uh, went on for a fourth amazing year. So I think we need to give a, a round of applause to, to Lorraine and Steve for this because they were... <laughs> Lorraine was the main driver and Steve was the support and, and the work that they put in to, to do with the, the hampers was, was phenomenal. Um, also, Healthy Living Courses run by Blidworth on the Move, uh, which are open to anyone, will continue for a third year in 2024. So here we go, we'll give you some facts and figures. I know people like to write down facts and figures. So Blidworth on the move, um, right from the start. So number of journeys um, tends to fluctuate a little bit, but the average number of journeys per week uh, has steadily increased across uh, the, the three and three quarter years since start. Uh, so we're now up to just over, just sorry, just short of eight and a half journeys a week. Um, and I think they continue to increase really as people get to hear about what the project is doing. And people can use Blidworth on the move. They don't have to make a financial contribution, but it keeps the project going if they do. So if, if anybody needs hospital transport or to get to the local doctor's surgery or opticians, then that service is available. And again, uh, Lorraine manning the phones for that does a, an amazing work fitting everybody into the diary. So I'll give you some other figures. So food aid... So the stats on this, these, these continue to blow my mind. These, are, these figures are up to date as at uh, last Friday. So the figures just continue to increase, as I'm sure you're aware. The crisis with regard to uh, people's incomes is not over. Um, and the, the amount of support that people are needing um, is just going through the roof at the moment. We're, so we're doing an average of 105 meals a week. Uh, last week we supplied, supplied food to, to 18 different families or individuals. And it's, it's, it's sad when they come in, but people, to actually cross the threshold is a major step for some people to come in and ask for it. And, and we, we, we're not like some of the, the food banks that are linked into the Trussell Trust where you can only be referred for three times. Anybody can come in. We're not judging any, anybody. Anybody can come in and ask for food. If they've got a crisis in their life, uh, you can come in once, you can come in 52 times in a year if you need that food. Uh, and we have, we've never run out yet, and I don't believe we ever will because we have God's bountiful provision in this place. But the, the, the figures are, speak for themselves, really. The average number of meals has just gone up year on year. So... I'll give you some stats on the Christmas hampers as well because, uh, again, they, they were a blessing to the people that received them. As I put at the bottom, 137 smiles. We helped 137 people or, or families out with the Christmas hampers. Uh, so there was 50, 58 full hampers. That was, that was a big bag of food, enough for a couple of weeks. Uh, but we also put in those hampers. We put gifts for, for each of the children and, and also the adults in the households. Uh, and also some people received additional gifts some people uh, had a meal that was uh, given them for Christmas Day. And then there was the, the meat vouchers that went out through the lunch and exercise, Lily. So, uh, so just to recap, um, so we as a church, we're talking here, we are making use, making the building more usable and attractive and welcoming to people in our church community and anyone else who should come into it. So we're looking after and improving the asset that we have uh, and we will ensure to have a building that is a joy for everyone to come into. So thank you, and it, it really is a big, big thank you. Uh, my heart is so grateful to, to everybody for the support that you've given us over the last 12 months. Uh, but our future is exciting. Um, 
if you read the email that I sent out on Friday, what makes you tick? What makes you excited? And this kind of thing makes me excited because I know God is on the move. God is doing something fantastic in this place uh, and in our villages. So get a hold of it. Be a part of it. Um, so we're now believing for a year of growth. We see different people step through the door virtually every Sunday. Um, they don't always stay or they don't come back for the next week, but they know that we're here and people know that we are a church that is on the move. So we're believing for growth numerically and spiritually in 2024. So Glenn and Daniel are going to lay out for you um, over the next few minutes um, some of the vision that we have for the church uh, in 2024 uh, and for our future together. So thank you very much. That is me done. set the standard I have to say well done Mark can can I just ask you to stand for a second because the finances of this church and the work that goes into keeping those finances in a good order is down to one man 
and I want to honour you, Mark, for the work, the effort you put in behind the scenes, never asking for any, any praise or gratitude. Well, this morning, you're going to get honoured because we appreciate you, what you do, and how you go about your duties, but it's always with an excellent spirit and the spirit of God within your heart. So let's, let's just honour him up. <laughs> and you can make a tech seat, by the way. Sorry. And we were praying this morning, and I was encouraging Mark, because I'm going to touch on something that changed my life in a minute that Mark spoke into my life some 30-odd years ago. So I think God has brought it back to the forefront to say this is where we are today. It might have been 30 years ago, but I want to encourage Mark to keep that prophetic spirit, to stoke up the furnace in his heart, to keep releasing both into individual life and into the life of this church so we can continue to, continue to grow being God's vision and be where God wants us to be. Because the most important thing for me is to be where God wants us to be. Because where God is, there's the blessing. Where God is, there's the power. Where God is, there's the resurrection, the restoring and the breakthrough and the miracles in the name of Jesus. And I want to be in that place. And I think God's got us on a great journey. Uh, we've been on a great journey, and the reason for playing that video is to just remind us after our 25 years of where we've come from and where we've been. And, you know, we didn't have any pictures of the house church before uh, Paul and Jill started going into itinerant ministry. But, you know, 25 years ago, we moved into this building. That's a major achievement. That's a major achievement. But three years prior to that, the real event took place when two churches came together and two leaders came together. And we're, I just I mentioned that to honour them again but also to say that what we're doing today is we have a platform and a foundation upon which to build, which is God, but of course they've got us to this place, and what we're doing today, in a new season, in a new dawn, in a new rising, is moving forward from the position that Lewis, Paul, Jill, and Pam have enabled us to get to through the power of God. And we want to keep doing that. We want to just finish... and. I, I don't know whether I'll see the end of this race. I don't mean because I'm ill or anything. But what I mean is, you know, I've got a talented young leader that's coming on and he is just about to complete his first year at MIT. He's got two more years to go. And it's a great joy to be traveling with you guys and the leadership team. And we're just sharing in our prayer room at the back there the unity amongst the leadership team and what we're trying to do is just unbreakable. It's seamless, and you can see it. And not only outside of that room, but, you know, I go and see people, and they're telling me who's been to see them, and I know the pastoral care is taking place in this building and this congregation. And I, I just want to honour you guys. I don't know that you want to be, uh, you know, named, but I just want you to know that we see it. More importantly, God sees it about what you're doing to encourage people, to encourage their lives and what God is doing in this place. All right? Now then, Mark's took all my time, so he says, uh, so Jesus the Game Changer, you might have remembered sometime in December, I spoke about Jesus the Game Changer, and I think I made a promise to myself and Margaret I wouldn't mention football, but a great example is football, because we were, <laughs> well, we won yesterday and we beat Notts County, but I didn't want to mention that, uh, I got the double over them, did I mention that bit, but look, what I'm trying to say is we had a depleted team against a squad that had been bolstered and we were th I was fearing the worst. I was thinking that this is going to be really tight or one of us is going to get absolutely thrashed. Well, County really pushed us. But one moment of genius by Keeler Dunn taking the ball from outside the box, bending it around every player into the top corner, was a game changer in that game. And I want to tell you, that's how Jesus affected my life. Jesus is a game changer. And you know, Jesus has is, is, is been, we've been on this journey together 
basically since Daniel came. But for the last year, we've really had some intensity behind what we believe God wants to do. We've tested it, we've prodded it, we've walked around, uh, and uh, uh, the trustees know, and uh, a, few, a, a few isolated people know, but not many people know what we're going to share this morning. We've tried to keep it so it didn't filter out about what's, what's coming down the line. I've got to move on very quickly. But, you know, Hebrews 6 says, and I spoke about this on the day, that, you know, we have to believe in God. And we have to believe he exists. And for the first 30 odd years of my life, I knew God existed. I knew God, but I didn't know he existed. And the minute I got to know God existed, it changed my life forever. Up to this day, and I pray forevermore until the day I meet eternity, when I'm 110 or 120 or whatever age it might, might be. But it says, you know, we've got to get to know. And then pass, in, in verse 7, it goes on in Hebrews 11. It says, by faith Noah built. It goes on to say, by faith Abraham, who was called and went, obeyed and went. To be faithful to the call of God and where God wants to take us. And he built, they built by faith. And they went against opposition and not knowing exactly where the finished time frame would be. So I want to just get on to the prophecy that Mark spoke 30 years. Now, you all know this if you've been in the building long enough at any time. But I just really feel I need to share this as we go into what God's doing in our lives, the life of this church, that I took as a game changer. This, this prophecy was a game changer for me on Wednesday Car Park that caused me to leave the youth work I was doing in Mansfield, to go straight to Rock Cottage, I think on the first Monday night I could get into the prayer meeting. Everybody was surprised I was there, but I said, look, God spoke to me. He told me I've got to leave where I am, join this group, and be baptised. And we did all of that within two weeks. I was baptised in the old building with all the lead pipes and everything. I seem to have survived so far that it's not really caused me too many problems. But look, it's this prophecy. Right, oh, can you see that? Okay, that, that working. But the Lord says, I will set those in captivity free. Those who are bound in the chains that their enemy has shackled them in shall be loosened. That was me. Jesus became a game changer for me. And I believe now God is saying, as we move forward, as we step out in faith with a passion to serve God, this is what's going to take place in our communities. We're going to see people awaken spiritually and know a God exists and there'll be a game changer in their lives. It said, where there are restraints, God decided now is the time for these to be removed. And it's time for freedom to break out. Are you ready for freedom to break out in our communities? I am ready because they don't know freedom. Spiritually, they don't know freedom. I'm ready. And God's saying it's time for freedom to break out. If you're willing to act and step out, God will make what you feel to be a desert, a dry place into a place of fruitfulness. Restriction and reserve will turn to freedom and willing and will release come. Surely it will come as a flood. And God's been talking to us in our recent prayer meetings and visions about the flood and keys. And I'll let uh, uh, Jackie and Rob just explain a bit more about that later. But, you know, there's a, there's, a, there's, a, a, there's a flood. There's two visions coming together. One that I've heard from somebody 20 years ago and one from somebody who's been in this church for less than two years. He wouldn't have known that vision that was spoken. And it's spoken exactly the same vision about the overflow and the dam bursting and the water flowing and spilling its banks into the overflow. And God just says we have got to minister in the overflow and out of the overflow. So he wants us to overflow, work in the overflow and to minister and also to be working in that overflow, knowing that people, the, there, is a, there is spiritual awakening in that place. I was trying to get the word out. I stopped myself so I was going to say the wrong word. Uh, but the ground where anything floods is very fertile. Very fertile. So when this bank overflows through the power of the Holy Spirit, it's a very fertile overflow for us to work in. And God just says what we need to do is be in the overflow, that we can work and help people. Uh, you know, people are talking to us all the time. Not about faith not about religion. Their starting point is a spiritual awakening that they seek. I think that's a good place to start. 
you know, it's a good place to start. So this prophecy and what God is doing has changed my life and is also touching my life again to spur me on, to increase me, to grow internally, to move and to expect abundance from our living God, both in our lives and the life of our community, to see restoration, to see breakthrough and to see miracles take place in people's lives. It changed my life. I know I shouldn't have used PowerPoint because I'm always going to get slightly off track on it. But, you know, I, I do have a passion for what God's doing in this place. You know, and I see that passion in this building. I've seen our passion, without you knowing it, rise. And it's not saying that you weren't passionate before, but I just see an intensity of God's spirit in this place when we're worshipping. And when we're, when we're just talking and when we're moving about the place. And I just, you know, so passion's a big word for me at the moment. God has a passion for me. And God has a passion for us. And God's passion for me came before I had a passion for him. And that's really important. And I just want that passion to leak from me into wherever I am. And to leak into this community, to leak into the people I meet. And I want them to know the passion that burns within me. And the passion that burns within Christ. That they might be saved. And I might be saved. And I might know eternity because of him. Jesus came just at the right time. Just at the right time. And I want to say that Jesus, through his spirit, is just teeing up the right time to pour out his spirit into people's lives. We just need to be there to facilitate it, to help it through. We haven't got to be evangelists. We haven't got to know our Bible through back to front. What we've got to do is be the hands and feet of Jesus Christ. This temple needs to move out of this building and be in our community and be where people in need are. And Mark said something, I can't remember his exact words, but when we do the food bank, we're not looking, putting a questionnaire out, not judging anybody. We just think, see they're hungry, and we give them food. And I see people spiritually hungry. And all I can do is give them the love of Christ, a hope and a faith and a future that past regrets and nothing that should hold them back. And that door is open to anybody. We might have different views. We might come from a different starting point. But that fact, those two doors at the back are open to anybody to come in and to experience God and start the journey wherever they're at at that moment in time. The word of God is for everybody. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world. This is page one, by the way. What time are we on? I'd better get moving. You don't mind if I just share my heart, do you? To try and get out there what I believe God wants us to do. And if you're new with us this morning, this is not a normal service. This is really just trying to share the heart of God that is placed on our heart as a leadership team. And he's working through all of you, I believe. But John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he sent his one and only Son into this world that no one should perish but have all of eternal life for those who believe in him. Slide three. So passion. It got, I, you know, I've been sitting with this word passion and I've been looking at all sorts of different words and this scripture is the one that really speaks to me about from Romans, it never be lacking in zeal. So he's talking to me. Glenn, don't ever be lacking in zeal. Keep your spiritual fervour, serving the Lord, passionate in our praise to him. Passionate in our praise to him. If you don't know where to start with passion, just get passionate in praise. The rest takes care. The rest comes from that. But keep that zeal, that spiritual fervour, because I believe that's what people see in us most. It's what gets them past the judgmental God that people have told them exists. That this is the God who all he's going to do is push you down, doesn't want to know you. But what we have to do is awaken them and show the passion that we have for Christ. And we need to reflect Christ as he's in our life and know him and to be reflecting his love for you and me. Let's not be lacking in zeal. And that zeal does translate to passion. 
And if you go to the Hebrew word, it, it uses the word cleave. I was hesitant to use the word cleave because in this day and age it can have different connotations. But what it's saying is, Hebrew was saying we have to cleave to God. We have to stay close to God. We have to stay within God. We have to cleave to God first and foremost because that is our grace, that is our protection, that's our blessing as we move forward in the things of God. So passion has to do with the heart. I mentioned it, I think, last week or the week before. I wasn't here last week, was I? But it's that fire that burns within us. It's the, it's, it's the fire that motivates and energizes us to make a difference, to be the change. So I was changed by the game changer. And then Jesus said, be the change. So the change he made in me he wanted me to outwork that change into other people's lives. And I, I have to be honest, with you, have I been disappointed sometimes that I don't feel that I've affected people's lives in the way that I believe God wants me to? But all he's saying is keep on going. And I talked about that wall that was weakening, that we're pushing over. Right? I believe that wall's about to fall. You know, I can't share some of the conversations we've been having, but I'll tell you what, I'm excited about what's coming about where God is taking us. I'll try and move these quickly if you, if you don't mind. But I talked about fire. If we have a fire and we don't tend to it, it goes out. So what do we have to do? We have to stoke the fire. We have to give it fuel, the word of God. We have to give it fuel in a sense of our presence and our praise to God. We have to feed it. Because if we don't feed it continually, it will go out. I just want God, God is encouraging us to keep on feeding the fire. He's stoking the fire. He's stoking it up and it's, it's burning hotter and a passion within my heart. It's not in here. You know, knowledge is a great thing and I want to be knowledgeable, but that knowledge will only get me so far. It's about the passion that we have for Christ. The same passion he has for you and me. I just want us to know the things and let that fire burn. And some of you are burning hot now. But I believe God has got some intensity and some increase in that fire and that furnace within you to do things that you've been dreaming of, to do things that God's promised you. And it's not too late. We're all part of God's vision in this place. So I'll just quickly go through that. The reason I use that scripture is that it's all about encouraging one another. Spur one another on and I want us to keep spurring one another on. These two spur me on on a Monday and a Tuesday. They do all week, but we're together for seven hours a day for two days. And we spur one another on. There's not a, it's a bit like the House of Parliament. There's not a lot of business done in two days because we're encouraging one another. The business has to be done at another time and what we're, what we're planning to do. So I want to move on to an important scripture that spoke to us at this, this time. And it's from Genesis. I think I mentioned it a couple of weeks ago, and I just missed off the chapter 17 at the beginning. I just mentioned verses 1 to 3, but this is where it's from. And it was in my daily readings. And I sat bolt upright in reading it because it was confirmed what we've been working through. It confirmed what we believe God is saying to us and where we're going. And my summary is, just so I don't read all of it, I am... God Almighty. That's a belief in God Almighty. My God can do anything that he chooses. I just have to be on the right path to know what it is that God wants to do through me. I know I ask wrong things. Walk faithfully before me. Well, I believe we have a congregation here that walk faithfully before him. Then he says, I will make my covenant between me and you. Now he's talking to Abraham here, but I've taken this as he's talking to us as a church, that this scripture came alive to me. And he says, I will greatly increase your numbers. We cannot only measure church by the number of people on seats. But sometimes it's the only way, sometimes, but it starts with the growth in you and me. It starts with the growth of the fire of passion within each one of us to do what we believe God's asking us to do. And we've all got different gifts. That's what's so fantastic about it. We all can speak to different people. We all can speak to different people. 
And that scripture goes on where Abraham falls face down. And this is what I did. Right? And it goes on to change Abraham's name from Abraham to Abraham. Now, I'm not Abraham. Well, I'm not trying to claim that. But what spoke to me about this and what helped me is he changed Abraham's name at that moment in time. He changed it for a reason, to make him the father of nations. That's what his name says. And, I, and that really spoke to me. And I shared it with the guys and where we've been heading on this, on this journey. It really spoke to us. Let me just start explaining where um, I'm, I'm not trying to lead you into something, but I think it's important that you understand the journey that we've been on. This isn't a whim. This is something that we've been walking with for quite some time. Sheer Forest Community Church has been in existence for 28 years. Bloodworth Pentecostal before that, Rainworth and Bloodworth Fellowship before that. Jill and I were just reminiscing about it on, on Friday. I couldn't get a word in edgeway between the two ladies, but I tried my best between sips of tea. <laughs> but it was so great to spend time with you and to honour Jill for the work that she put in to those 28 years and the years before that. And we're a community church, but I believe that community now is in our DNA. Communities in our DNA. We're starting to change the structure of the charity. I've got to tell you this, so you, just so you know. At the moment, we're an unincorporated charity, which everything that we do puts the trustees at risk. They can, if we get something wrong or something fails, they can come for our house. Now, recently when I bought a company, I bought an extremely large amount of money in order to buy the company. But because we were a limited company, our homes and our savings were not at risk. And a CIO that we're changing to is basically the charity world, a limited company. You just need to know we're changing. That doesn't really affect what we're doing in church. It just means that we're trying to protect the trustees that are here today, that they're not at risk. Especially if we go and move on to church plant, if we build and we start borrowing and we start taking out mortgages and we start looking to do increased things and extend our footprint in some way, then what the CIO does, as long as we're not negligent or fraudulent or doing something wrong, then it's the charity that has the bill, not the trustees. So we're going to be a CIA. Now we have that registration. We've got that charity number. It has to be a new charity number. We can't just upgrade the one we've got. We have to go through a whole different process, and that's took probably six months so far. Um, and we're just waiting now for the bank to catch up with us, and we can move on and then start to swap all our assets and our building and everything over into that. Sorry, that's just detail, but I feel as a congregation you should know that at a vision meeting like this when we're sharing figures, just so you know. And then, you know, that scripture, which is the one I prepared for my preacher at MIT, about shine, arise, for your light has come. The glory of the Lord rises upon you. And I believe that God is pouring out his spirit in this place. As he's done before, but remember, he's not doing it the same way as he did before. We forget the former things, he's doing it a new way, but he's going to split the sea. You know, he's just going to make a way where there seems to be no way. My friend needed that scripture last night as he was struggling in a place, and I believe God made a way for him. And um, you know, just, we just need to remember that God makes a way. So if I've got this right, my next slide, back to Jet Game Changer. Now, what I'm leading up to, and I'm just giving you the history behind this of where we've got to this point, but we're going to change our name while we're getting a new charity and we're moving on to what I think God wants us to do going forward, what God is stirring up within us and how I believe that God wants to change the name of the church in order that we might grow. And then when we're planting churches and we can move that name into different places, and this is what we're going to do. So, there you go. As soon as we've got a bank account in place, this is going to be our new name. It's going to be Passion Church. It's a new logo. 
And if you see that logo, it's talking the passion of the Holy Spirit, the fire behind it, the love of Jesus Christ in the heart, and then the cross of Jesus in the middle. This is where we're heading to become Passion Church. Probably come as a shock to you because we have kept it a trade secret between trustees and wives, partners, and spouses. And I'm surprised we've actually kept it. It's been quite hard because I've, I've had friends travelling with me who have been with me in prayer sessions and I've almost had to be slightly abstract and I've wanted to tell them but we had to keep it. The only person that knows outside of this room of trustees is Jill. And it was important that Jill knew yeah. what was, sorry, what was taking place. So we've revamped our core values slightly, so now you see the future has got Passion Church at the end of it. And what we have, have done is looked at our core values. They've not been altered for 25, 28 years. So we've just tried to summarise what I believe this church is and where we are with our core values. So the first one is generous. Freely given of our time, talent and treasures. I think we're good at that. You've only got to look at those figures and see £126,000. A lady was asking me only this week, how does this church function? Where does this get its grants from? Where does it get its income from? Where does its money come from? I said, from the generosity of its people. And she actually thought I was kidding. I said, no, there's a generosity from the people. I didn't know how much she wanted me to get into a little preach about tithing and giving. Um, but she was surprised that we survive on giving from the congregation. I'm not, because we're generous. It's not just about money. It's about giving our time, talent, and our treasure. There's a description that goes with it. I'll try and speed things up so I don't use any more, lose any more time. And then the second one is relevant, making God's timeless message applicable to everyday life. I think one of the things that the church... I'm not talking about us, I'm talking about church generally, has failed to do is to make his message applicable to everyday life. And people just don't think they fit into it. They don't feel part of it. They don't feel they can be based on past decisions, based on things they've made. And I just want to say that everybody has made bad decisions. But there's no reason not to come to Jesus. We want to make it relevant to who he is. He came for every single person authentic that we believe in journeying together you've heard that word from me so often and allowing people to be real about where they're at it's important that we journey with people from where they're at otherwise we put them in condemnation ourselves when I came into this building I think there's a gracious bunch of people here that walked with me <laughs> and went through, and I just want to mirror that to people when they come into this church, because people are going to come in exploring, experimenting, testing, wanting to see what's happening in this place, and we've got to meet them where they're at. We've got to meet them where they're at. And you know, I, you might disagree with me, but I never put a time scale on when it is that they might get from point A to point B because that's the Holy Spirit's job. The Holy Spirit touches. What we have to do is bring them into a presence where they get that spiritual awakening and know who God is. Connecting is our fourth core value. Connecting and reaching out of our local community and wider world. Well, you've seen a lot of that, and I'll come back to talk, and you know, we, 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 we're running out of time, but it's important that we're connecting. And then we want to be excellent, aiming to be the best we can. And as a church, giving everybody in this building the best that they can be, that we're going to be the best that we can. And then, you might have figured out, but those core values spell out grace, because without grace, we have nothing. It's by grace that we're saved through faith. And I just want to, you know, we, we've got some leaflets printed out for you. They've got all this on, but we had a printing error. So they're stuck in my wallet. We don't send that out. If we're talking about being excellent, I don't think we should send things out that aren't quite right. But they're coming. You'll have them for next, next week. So from this point, we go on to 
growth track and I'll invite Daniel up just to cover that. Praise God. Come on, church. God is good. Amen. Great stuff. Yeah. Isn't it exciting? New season. Come on, church. Are we excited? Yes. Come on. I was sad that I'm, I'm a bit scared. I'm like, whoa, are we excited or are we not? Let's have some response. Amen. Come on. Who's excited for the season? Come on. Who's excited for all that God's doing in his house? Amen. Praise God. Come on. That's, whoa, that's the relief. That's the relief. And can I say, you know, we believe in transparency. You know, everything we do, you know, from, from our figures, from the plan and vision, everything that goes into it, what you see is what you get. And I can certainly say about Mark and Glenn, I've, 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 I've been journeying with them for just a, over a year now. And I can say, first thing I noticed about them was this key, transparency. They were so transparent in their leadership. They were tr- so transparent with everything that they, did, that they did. I thought, wow, this is a good team. And I, I can say that, you know, having worked with them for just over a year, it's a good team. They're a good team. Amen. And everything, you know, that, that's just been shared from this platform. I can say, yes, you know, they're speaking from their heart. They're two men of God who are passionate about Jesus, passionate about community, passionate about life. And that's what we're here for, come on church. We're passionate about Jesus, aren't we? We're passionate about reaching out. We're passionate about doing life together. Okay, so here we are, growth track. Come on, growth track. So this is about, so what we've done is we've now divided our growing track into four different tracks. I'm going to talk about that in a bit. But before I do that, I just want to highlight a little bit about worship. As a church, we believe in worshiping Jesus. We believe, you know, there's power in praise and worship, as we just sang um, in today's song about that praise. Praise is our weapon. There's power in praise. You know, and the scripture reminds us that as I was praying for this year, you know, God gave me a scripture. It's in my notepad. Let me get it. <laughs> God gave me a scripture. And this scripture is found in Psalms, Psalm chapter 96, verse 1. Famous scripture, and the psalmist writes, Sing to the Lord a new song. Let me say that again. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. And as I was praying and seeking God, God, what is it that you have for us this year? I felt God put in my heart that it's time for his church to bring out a new song. In other words, it's time for his church to write new songs. It's time for his church to sing new songs. And that's exactly what we're going to do this year, church. We're going to write songs, amen. And we're going to sing them together. And hey, if you've got a song burning in your heart, if you're a poet, if you're a script, a scripture writer, if you've got that talent, that gift, then please come see us. Let's sit down. Let's work our way together. And we've already got one song in hand ready, and we're going to release it in Easter. You might have already seen it on our YouTube channel. Our wonderful Julie wrote the song, so we'll be introducing that song this Easter. And there'll be more songs to come. But come on, church, who's excited for singing a new song and bringing our new song? I mean, we're going to do that this year. Praise God. So coming to growth track, our first growth track is this. Know that? Let's go back. Encounter Jesus. Encounter Jesus. And how we're going to bring that about is, yes, we've already got our Sunday services. We're expecting our Sunday services to be evangel- evangelical services, a service where people can encounter God, a service where people can worship God, a service where people can be filled with the Holy Spirit, a service where people can truly be themselves and worship Jesus. And also we've got this another thing called Welcome Nights. It's going to be for people who've just come to church, who've never been to church before and who want to know more about church. And in Welcome Nights, Glenn, myself, and the team will be introducing and talking more about our core values and why we do what we do. And we'll also be emphasizing more about what's the vision for the year and and talk more about membership and everything. Then Alpha Course, our wonderful Rob and Jackie, they're so good at this. I was there, you know, journeying with them, and as they led the course, I was just sad. They're mesmerized. I was like, these guys are really good in what they do, you know. They're presenting the course to new believers or newcomers who want to know more about Jesus. And if you know someone who might be, um, who might be willing to get to know the church and get to know what church is all about and, and want to know more about Jesus, and I'd highly recommend it. We'll be running it, uh, and um, in the due course, we'll let you know when we'll be running it and, and more information to follow. Then we're also going to introduce another foundation course called First Steps for New Christians. 
And if you've never done something like this before, you are more than welcome to do so. You know, in this um, session, we'll be talking about Holy Spirit. We'll be talking about scriptures. We'll be talking about tongues and interpretations and also. So this will be a basic course for new Christians. And the second track is going to be Experience Freedom. First track, Encounter Jesus. It's all about encountering Jesus. We're passionate that people encounter Jesus. Secondly, we're passionate that his people experience freedom. How are we going to do that? We're going to introduce another course called Freedom in Christ course. Okay, and we'll be running this and there'll be more information to follow and we'll let you know more about it in due course. And secondly, we're also going to introduce mentoring classes, in other words, slash counseling sessions. And if you've, there's some deep-rooted issues in your heart, hey, like I was sharing last week, you see, like, Things in our hearts cannot be dealt with if we leave it in there. It has to be uprooted and brought it to surface and brought it to light. And the only way we'll be able to do it is if we sit down and talk about it. And come on, church, we believe in journeying together. This is about us journeying together. This is about us growing together. This is about us being passionate about Jesus together. And if you are passionate about walking in freedom, then come on, let's walk together, let's journey together, let's sit down together, let's talk about it, amen, we're here, let's sit down, and we're going to have some mentoring and counseling sessions in place, and we've also got links, and we're partnering with other establishments in making this possible, and thirdly, come on, baptism, there are going to be baptism classes, and Glenn's going to talk more about this um, later on, but yes, come on, we experience freedom when we baptize, in Jesus, and we get baptized in the Holy Spirit, um, but we're going to talk about that more in the coming weeks. Third track, discover purpose. We're passionate that people walk in their God-given purpose, encountering Jesus, experiencing freedom, and people discovering their purpose, and we do this by life groups, which many of you are already part of, but if you aren't part of life group, please come see us, we can sit down and we can work that out, and we're also going to introduce another course this year, there's lots of courses, isn't it, but hey, courses are there for a reason, amen, so that we grow together in God, so that we grow together in our faith with Him. Spiritual gifts course, and this is going to be a course where we will sit down and we'll dis- uncover and help you discover the gift in that God's placed in you. This is about church operating in the giftings together, amen? This is not just like me operating in my gifting and you just st- sitting there and watching me operate in my gifting. This is about us operating in God's giftings together. Each and every one of us, God placed a powerful gifting in you so that you can impact your world for Jesus. And we want to help you in your journey with the wisdom of God. And, um, and you know, because the scripture says in the Counsel of many, there is wisdom. And, this, and hence why we've got a wonderful team who are willing to sit down and um, discover wisdom. And also we're going to, um, this is another bit about finding your fit. So in you discovering your purpose, where do you fit? What is your gifting? Are you an evangelist? Are you a teacher? Are you a prophet? What is it that God's placed in there? Because I think sometimes we confuse ourselves because we compare our gifting with other people's giftings. And we want to help you discover your own gifting so that you can work in your gifting and be the original you God has created you to be. Amen. Lastly, be the change. This is the vision statement for the year. Glenn's going to talk about talk this about this in a bit. But be the change. And we're here to be the change. Amen. Last year, what was our tagline? Determined to make a difference. And this year, we are be the change. Be the change. So what is on be the change? Function in your God-given gifting. Secondly, impacting our community. And thirdly, making a difference. So there's going to be opportunities uh, for us to serve. And this gonna, it's, it's going to come in different ways, um, like going out. Um, we are leaflets and posting leaflets, praying for people. There's going to be praying opportunities, all sorts of opportunities. So we want to help you discover your gift, and we want to help you be all that God has created you to be for his praise and for his glory. Amen. So this is our growth track. We've got four tracks, all right? First one is encountering God. Come on, say it with me, church. Encounter God. What's the second one? What's the third one? Fourth. Let's remember that this year, amen. We're growing together in God, amen. Pursuing all that he has for us in Jesus' name. Come on, let's give God a praise and a shout this morning, amen. (laughs) Praise God. Over to you, Glenn, again. Oh, do I need that? Yeah, I do. Well, thanks, Daniel. Relevant. So there we go. We've got core values done, so we can move on from that. 
trying to move things on just a little bit without uh, cutting anything out. So where do we go from here? So Passion Church, uh, we spent a lot of time on the logo, didn't we? Trying to bring the three elements together. Um, I'll skip through this. To be the change, with, when, when you get the, your leaflets, my key scripture's been in the last six months about faith, hope, and love, and the greatest of these is love. And how we, I, for me, it's the love of Christ that saved me. And it's the knowing the love of Christ, experiencing the love of Christ that gave me hope that the decisions I've made, the decisions in the past, the regrets I've got, didn't hold me back and it gave me hope for the future. And that hope gave me faith to live a life and be the change that Jesus called me to. So that's what this is. Love, we've got the love, gives us hope in the future. Faith enables us to live an abundant life. And then key for us is restoration, breakthrough, and miracles. And we're believing for that. It, they're very narrow titles, but very big subjects. And I haven't got time to start talking about what's a miracle, and you know, we'll be thinking about raising the dead and all those sort of things, but there are all sorts of miracles that are great to take place. The greatest one is people coming to know Jesus Christ. Oh, Jackie, I think I've lost your praise. I'm sorry, I think. Three minutes. <coughs> no, 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 I'm, you're on. Don't worry, don't, I'll, I'll get there. All right, so we we all got a number of initiatives that we've got working together. And the first initiative, the key initiative, is prayer. And Rob and Jackie's just going to share a little bit on where we're going with that and how you can join in and be part of that. Thank you, Jesus. What a great morning. Um, it's a privilege um, just to bring to you this morning as part of our church vision, um, a focus to prayer. Um, Daniel mentioned the word deep-rooted, and, you know, I've been scripted, so two or three minutes. Rob's pared me right down to one page. Um, but, you know, Rob and I, we are deep-rooted in what God is doing and calling um, us to do corporately, praying as a church we are committed to this church to pray. And we want to welcome Jesus Christ to take a center stage as we move into this new season of prayer as a church. You know, where we come together, Jesus Christ is in the midst. So Rob, in a moment, is just going to do a brief layout um, of a structure for us to consider prayer corporately um, for the season ahead. Over the weeks, um, we've been praying together, leadership has been praying together, and the Lord has presented some keys to us. And we're still, you know, we're still sort of sucking on those in a sense, um, but prayer is key. And, you know, one of those cares, um, pr um, keys being prayer. And, you know, the Lord came and spoke to us about him being like the master key, you know, that exact representation of, of who God is. Those keys can represent truth, forgiveness, grace, faith, encouragement, and above all, you know, to set the captives free. Uh, scripture tells us that where two or more are gathered together in agreement, and it's that word agreement, there's power in agreement. Jesus promises to be with us in the midst. Amen. That's why we want him to come and be center stage. You know, we welcome him to be center stage in our, in our prayers. Um, Jesus, when uh, asked by the early disciples, teach us to pray. You know, we all pray, don't we? We all know how to pray. But, but he responded with this. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. You know, coming together in agreement, coming together um, uh, in unity. You know, when brethren dwell together in unity, it commands a blessing. Um, and as a church, we want to begin again to come together and to pray and seek kingdom purposes and the keys that will unlock those kingdom purposes in our lives, um, in the lives of our families and our friends and our loved ones, you know, and our communities. And as the words of Jesus begin to see those kingdom purposes manifest here on earth, you know, here in Blidworth, on earth as it is in heaven, just as Jesus taught.
So this is what we'd like to get you involved in. On the first Monday of each month at 7 p.m., we're looking to meet together here in the church for a time of prayer and worship. The first meeting will be on Monday the 4th of March. And along with this, each Monday, the leaders are going to be fasting and praying. They'll be praying at 9 a.m., 1 to 2 p.m., and 6 p.m. And we'd like to encourage you all to join us in this prayer time, wherever you are, whether you're at home, at work, in the gym, or in the car, praying for whatever is on your heart, including the church, our community, family, healing, and addictions. And there may well be specific topics of prayer that we will highlight on the previous Sunday, before the meeting on the Monday. Of course, we still want you to pray over the rest of the week, but Monday's prayer will be the key. Uh, finally, finally um, you know, in our recent prayer time, we strongly believe and agree wholeheartedly that God is calling this church to be a powerhouse of prayer. The Lord really impressed that upon me, you know, a place where we can come together and plug in, plug into Jesus, you know, to come together to unify because there's power in unity, power in agreement. And, you know, to support one another and exhort one another and lift up and unlock those kingdom purposes um, that God has got for us at this time and season that we're moving into. And finally... When I was really, really in my closet, as I were, um, Jesus laid on my heart that his resume, and I think he used the word resume, I think it's, it's Canadian, like he talks to me in Canadian these days, because resume, um, <laughs> that all we need on our resume is a passion to pray. A passion to pray. Because, you know, some of us think we're not qualified and we all pray, but all on that resume, or what we would call our curriculum vitae, you know, God is looking for a passion to pray. Um, so f just to complete that, Carl, just if we would like to join me, we'll just say a prayer. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, thank you, Lord Jesus. Lord, thank you that we can come together. We can join together in agreement and that we can pray for your kingdom purposes that we, know, we can come to know the heart of the Father and the heart of this community. We can pray for a unity and a passion in our hearts and a passion in our spirits to see your kingdom purposes um, and our community here in Blidworth and in our church and in our family lives and in our friends and our loved ones. We just pray for that um, unity and agreement and that passion to see your kingdom purposes come about. And Lord, be with us in the midst of these prayer times. Lord, come take center stage, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Just to clear, you've been ever so patient with us, but a lot of information to get through, isn't there? It is, it is important. And the best way to do a Vision Sunday is to share with you on a, on a Sunday morning. It, it. Just, to, just to some closing comments for everything. I mean, I'm really excited about what God's doing. Prayer we've talked about. We've got to get children's work, after school, connect type ministries up and running. We've got to continue mission in uh, Spring Harvest in Canada. And Nepal is a big area for us. When we delivered the drums, they got on FaceTime because they wanted to have a conversation and thank us personally. It wasn't good enough to send an email. And we're just exploring that. India, uh, Nick and Sam, we've only been on yesterday actually, uh, asking me to convey their thanks and prayers for what we do for them and we appreciate them in return. They've got some difficulties arising, so I'm thinking next week we'll have to get in touch and just find out what, what they're up against. Bulgaria, um, we're having some breaks there that 
because ministers have stopped, but we're still exploring Bulgaria with WOW. We might be able to do that. Good short-term missionary opportunities along with, uh, ne along with NG Network. One of the things I'm really excited about is I've been crying out to God, lamenting to God for a place where we can send people into a Christian environment that might free them from addiction, whatever that addiction might be. Don't just think drugs. Addiction takes many different forms. And it breaks my heart that sometimes I've only got limited places I can send them. Well, we've started an early journey with an organization called Team Challenge. If you've been in Talbot Street long enough, you'll understand a little bit about, bit about Team Challenge is. But we went there last week for a meeting, not with them, with NG, and I was so impressed. And, of course, we've got a prodigy of Team Challenge stood on the stage, so that speaks for itself and, and where that comes from. But we have a place now where we can start to build, where if we have somebody in addiction who wants help, that's the key, they've got to want help, they will come here to meet them and explore what they can do with them. We're even thinking there might be a surgery type thing. And we meet lots of people with addiction. And we now start to build a place where we could send them, where not only do they uh, detox, they would also uh, get to counseling to get to the root problem of why they started their addiction. It's not just detoxing, it's moving a step further. And they will offer them a residential course over in Teen Challenge that will help them break free from the root cause of what it is that sent them that way. I'm really excited about that because we haven't had that Christian organization to go to before and we're just exploring that, pushing the door. And uh, the lady came over to see us and spent a couple of hours with us even though she said she had five minutes to talk to us. Really, I think, a light-minded thing going on there. So Isaiah 54, stretch out your tents, lengthen your tent cords, be prepared to receive and to expect more from God. And I'm just excited about the opportunities God's going to bring our way. And all I want to say to you this morning is, God's positioning this church to be ready. In season and out of season, with a passion and a fervor to serve him. In Jesus' name, amen.